Anthony. Bloody breakfast. The victim's name is Jonathan Carlisle, head of uh, paediatric cardiothoracic surgery at St Benedict's. He's 48 years old, single, no kids. Who's that? Neela Sajani, girlfriend, says she came back after a shift. Let herself in, found him on the floor, dialed 999. She's an anaesthetist at the same hospital. Very slish. Yeah, you wouldn't say no, would you? I know why the NHS is on its knees. You signed to forced entry? No. This way. Has to be some sort of big shot to get action out there, doesn't it? Yeah, I know. I've had a bloody walker on the phone since five o'clock this morning. Morning, Mike. The depth of the indentation makes it look like a like a very heavy blow, possibly with some sort of blunt instrument. <sighs> so it wasn't accidental. Well, let's get him to the mortuary before we draw any conclusions, shall we? Anything in the bedroom? Oh, no. Uh, beds are still made up. Clean sheets doesn't look like anyone slept in them. Well, the Queen. Yeah, Elton John. <laughs> There is, however, one person that I'd like to make a special mention of. He's the head of our fundraising committee, the man no one can say no to, Mike Walker. Come up here, Mike. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to announce we have raised the grand total of £352,000. Naughty bird! <laughs> uh, 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 from my heart, from the heart of all of our children here, hearts that sometimes need such care, thank you very much for all of your donations. Thank you. <laughs> Take this thing away from me, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> God. Out of control. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Johnny, I'm DCI Russian Connor. This is. I'm sorry, I'm due back on shift. I have to get ready. Are you sure that's a good idea? I have operations scheduled. People I can't let down. I think you should know that we're treating Jonathan Carlyle's death as suspicious. I see. And you're his girlfriend. And Neith's just at the hospital, is that correct? Mm. Yes. <laughs> and you know, did anyone hold a grudge against him? No. So he seemed all right to you? Nothing troubling him? Nothing troubled Jonathan. And you can think of no one who had anything against him at all. Nina? What is it? Hello, Amber. Remember me? No, I'm not sure. Um, it's probably nothing. I understand this is a difficult time. I do, but anything that you can think of, no matter how trivial. The father of a girl we treated was giving him a hard time. Thank you, thank you. Amber Webster. Thank you. Why? Well, it was completely unfounded. Jonathan did everything he could. Thank you. Yeah, that's right, Webster. Apparently he was making some kind of complaint against Jonathan Carl. Sam, can you check out someone called Gary Webster for me? Have a look at this. He still has a healthy interest in nurses, but on purely professional grounds. Right. What have you got? 
see how far they took that. Yep, thanks. So there was a complaint, but it seems a bit more serious than Neela said. Hospital management had asked Carlisle to produce a formal statement regarding Amber Webster's death. And there's a restraining order against Gary Webster. Two counts of serious verbal abuse against Carlisle on hospital grounds. Have we got an address? Thank you. Would you like to sit down? No, thank you. I need to talk to your husband about a Mr. Jonathan Carlyle. Why? Mr. Carlyle is dead. What happened? Oh, we're still investigating. I understand there's a restraining order against your husband. Mr. Webster? Yes. And there's a possibility Mr. Carlyle was murdered. I understand you have a complaint against him, is that correct? He was going to answer for Amber's death. Gary, love. He was going to have to tell the truth. Have either of you seen Carlyle recently? Mr. Webster, have you broken your restraining order? We had to wait a long time for Amber. After she died, we did a few things we're not proud of. I don't regret it. I don't regret it! But our communication with Carlisle has been through solicitors for quite a while. Isn't that right, Gary? Look, that's what he took from us. Gary. Why don't the girl loves those penguins? Gary organized a birthday party for her at the zoo. I wanted to make it special. It was, love. Can you tell me what happened when your little girl went in for her operation? At first it just seemed like every other time, didn't it, Gary? Hmm. Amber was born with a heart condition. Aortic stenosis. She'd been in and out of hospital all her life. Carlisle told us the operation was routine. Oh, hello, Amber, love. It's good to see you. Hello, Amber. <laughs> Remember me? Off you go, darling. See you in a moment. Oh, brave little princess. Hello, Amber. We're just going to slip you gently across onto this other table, all right? You trusted him? Well, then this nice man over here is going to give you a little something. Trusted everyone at that place. He even came out and told us how well it had gone. There we go. Complete success. I wanted to run up and down the corridor, you know, shouting. She's going to be all right, but you can't, because so many sick children there don't get better. A few hours later, she died in intensive care. And Carlisle didn't even bother to go back in and try and save her. Why? They closed ranks. They tried to tell us it was because of Amber's condition, like it was her fault. It changed from being a routine procedure to a complex one with unforeseen complications. So pretty. I have to ask you where you were last night. We were here. Both of you? We watched TV and got a takeaway. You can ask the delivery boy. He saw you both? He definitely saw me. I went to the door. Oh, I hated Jonathan Carlyle. Gary. I wanted to make him pay. Wouldn't you? Well, would you? I mean, if Abigail died and you thought the surgeon was negligent. <laughs> Don't even go there, Roisin. If it was me, though, I'd want to smash his fucking face in. Really? It's difficult to explain unless you've got kids, isn't it? You know, you never cease to surprise me. It's not every day you find out your hard-nosed boss is a secret giving side. Jonathan Carlyle was a respected man. It's gonna be any of your zero tolerance shit. Some bruising from the blow, but it didn't fracture the skull. Now, 
Your victim have a history of drug abuse? No. Oh. Very recent. No sign of healing, slight intermuscular bruising. I'd say very recent. And did you find any others? Yeah, at least four in his groin area. I've asked for an urgent drug screen on his blood. Why, well, he won't be the first doctor who's been dabbling in the hard stuff, will he? Now, why the hell was this syringe? Why didn't we find it at the scene? Well, because he was getting high with someone. They tidied it up and left. Guy's not looking so respectable now, is he? Getting up? I've put some breakfast out. Please, love. I've got to get to the school. I can't afford to take any more time off. She's six years old today. I know. It's hard for me, too. Gary, we have to move on. I can't. She's dead. Why don't you bury your daughter, you sick fucker? Very sorry. Dr. Lawson. I know I've kept you waiting, but with Jonathan gone, we're really up against it. Follow me. Obviously, we're all reeling, but it doesn't stop the kids being ill. Uh, did you notice any difference in Carlisle in the weeks before he um, died? No. Hey, Jason, how are you doing? OK. Ah, ready to go home? Yeah. Good man. He wasn't um, anxious, worried about anything. No, that really wasn't Jonathan's style. What about the inquiry into Amber Webster's death? Well, as far as I know, that's just a formality. Hayley, how's my superstar? Not so good. OK, make sure she gets regular paracetamol and order another chest X-ray. You're doing really well, Hayley. Dr Lawson, you don't seem uh, to understand how important it is. Look, obviously, I can't imagine what the Websters are going through, but Amber was very fragile and we did all we could. Well, what about Carla and his relationship with Hayley Sajani? Probably something you'll have to ask her. Okay, well done, Carly. Good girl. Good girl. Would you uh, check on him, please, and administer an antiemetic? Look, I'm really sorry. We're going to have to do this another time. What can you tell me about fentanyl? It's an opiate, 80 times stronger than morphine. Abused by doctors? <laughs> yeah, it's been known. Gives a very quick high, lasting about 15 minutes, out of the bloodstream in 48 hours. 
But there was enough in his blood to kill a rhino. Are we talking suicide? Yeah. So he injects himself. Then he takes the works, puts them in a plastic bag and flushes them down the can. Nah. Just not possible. With that dose, he wouldn't be doing any tidying up. Okay, so someone was there. Yeah, go back to the girlfriend. What's her name? Neela, the anaesthetist. Well, where are you going? There you go. Cheers, mate. Cheers, pal. Anything to come out about the hospital or Jonathan? It's better that you tell me now. Yeah. No. There's nothing I can think of. Did he ever take drugs? Not that I saw. But you know, Jonathan, he liked to work hard and play hard. What about this Amber Webster business? Yeah, that was all in hand. Gary Webster's a very angry man, understandably, because well, Jonathan told him his daughter was going to be fine. The operation was a success. He always forgets to eat. Thanks. Mike, do you want one? No, thanks, sir. <laughs> what about his personal life? His relationships? He was seeing Neela Sajani. Yeah, but you know Jonathan. Madly in love for five minutes. Then on to the next. Isn't that right? <laughs> Sorry, there we go. Thank you. I'm looking for Neela Sajani, please. One moment, please. <clears throat> Disposal of control drugs in the operating theater. <sighs> Recent audit of the department has shown a lack of adherence to hospital guidelines for the disposal of unused controlled drugs. Methadone, morphine, dimorphine, fentanyl. Fentanyl. I'm so sorry. Um, can you tell me about fentanyl? Um, it's it's an opioid analgesic. It's used in pain relief. And in operations? Yeah. So, uh, how come ampules of this stuff are blocking up your boyfriend's toilet? No idea. Ah, come on, Neela. What happened? You're messing around, you're getting high, something goes wrong. I have never been involved in taking controlled drugs, and if you accuse me of doing it again, I'll report you for harassment. Oh, I saw the memo on your notice board. Are drugs going walk about? I have nothing to say, and if you wish to question me further, you'll be hearing from my solicitor. Tell you what, why don't you give him a call now? I've already told you I was working all night. I went to Jonathan's after my shift around five. And you let yourself in? Yes. I have a key. I've said this. So, so you let yourself in and then... I found him on the floor and 
I dialed 999. And you were unaware of Jonathan Carlyle's fentanyl abuse? I don't know anything about fentanyl addiction, Jonathan's or anyone else's. If you want to test me, go ahead. That's fine by me. Don't no, worry, just the blood. I mean, we wouldn't know that fentanyl stays in your blood for how long is it? Um, 48 hours, sir. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, what I'd like to do is to take a hair analysis as well as a blood test. That way we'll be able to find out what's been in your system for four or five months. Is that okay with you, Nila? Come and see this. So, we've got a camera on the corner of Carlisle's Muse, but nothing actually on the front door. Who's the guy with the camera? Shit, it's Gary Webster. I'll slow it down. Webster's giving him a seriously hard time. Well, Gemma said they were home all night. Well, obviously not, Satch. I don't have kids, I don't go on emotional hunches, I go on hard evidence. Bring him in, Sam. Mrs. Webster. Gemma, this is D.S. Palmer. We just need to ask you a few questions. Gemma, we just want a quick word with you and Gary. Have you been there again, Gary? You promised me you wouldn't go anymore. Can I go now? I, I need to be back at work. No, not yet. Do you recognise these? Uh, 
I've already explained to you. I came in, I saw him on the floor. See, Jonathan Carlyle was murdered by drugs that you had access to. Not by the wound to his head. He was killed by someone who knew how to administer a lethal dose. Now, right now, Neela, how many other people do you think are in the frame? Come on, what happened? Did you have an argument? Did he dump you like all the other women? <laughs> because if you think that I can't piece together the whole story of what happened that night, you are wrong, because that is what I do every single day. Neela. You're probably aware by now that my colleagues don't share the same respect for the medical profession I have. But I knew Jonathan. I need to know what happened to him. And right now you could be facing a murder charge. If you left him to die, that's gross negligence manslaughter. Not to mention perverting the course of justice. I walked in and... Jonathan was on the floor and there was all this drug paraphernalia around him. I just panicked. What about the bruise in his head? Did you see it? No. Did you cause it to make it look like something else? No, he was dead when I got there. Look, I... I know what I did was wrong, but I just didn't want everything he had achieved to be destroyed. Okay, Neela. We're going to release you pending further inquiry and a CPS report. But you know, I have this funny feeling that we're going to need to talk to you again. So, uh, no round the world trips, eh? By the time your next birthday comes around, you'll be at home and we can be a proper family again. Can I have a party at this weekend, please, Daddy? You can have whatever you want, darling. Can I have ballet lessons? Of course you can. And I tell you what else I'll do. I'll buy you a nice pair of ballet shoes so that soon you'll be dancing like a prima ballerina. And you can have whatever you like. Whatever you like. And the takeaway the Webster's say they used, there's no record of a delivery to their address the night Carlisle died. Well, did you bring the Webster's back with you? Oh, no, they either weren't there or they just went like us in. Get a warrant! Make sure Lawson and Sajani are safe. Oh, the little girl. She's still on ice. This photo was taken two days ago. What do you mean? They haven't buried her. Oh, for crying out loud, Gary. I said no more visits. Come on, Gary. My 
My supervisor's already been on to me. Please. Just one more visit. I don't want it. It's her birthday today. What's going on? Calm down. It's about Gary Webster. Gary Webster? Yeah, the police are looking for him. It seems he was stalking me as well as Jonathan. Maybe they think he killed Jonathan. How do I know? Gary Webster may be involved in the death of Jonathan Carlyle. He's pretty unhinged, so uh, I want to leave a uniformed officer here for your protection. That's okay. Sometimes once a week, sometimes more often. I only used to let him in for five minutes or so. When did he last come? I didn't think I was doing any harm. When did he last come here? About an hour ago. I told him that it was definitely the last time that I couldn't let him see you anymore. He was saying happy birthday and playing this music box. What are you doing, mate? Turn that off. Happy birthday, darling. We're going to the zoo, Amber. You're so pretty. Then his wife turned up, but I flatly refused to let her in. His wife was here? Yeah, you just missed her. It's a, it's a bit like a game of follow my lady, this, isn't it? description out there, we need to find him fast.
Christmas bugs. It was watery in my ears. The bubbles are coming out of my ears. She wants to go faster. This area is reserved for adults with children. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. If you don't leave, I have, I have to call security. Where's Amber? Gary. Where's Amber right now? She isn't here, is she? Let's go home, shall we? Mrs. Webster! I didn't know. It's okay, Gary. It's okay, we just want to talk to you, okay? Gary! I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. Gemma, these are your husband's personal possessions. If you could sign this. I'm sorry, I know this isn't the right time, but I'm going to have to ask you some questions, Gemma. We've got CCTV footage of Gary following Carlisle the night that he died. No, he didn't do that anymore. Look, I understand why you're trying to protect him. I know that's why you lied to us. I didn't lie. Gary was with me that night. There was no takeaway. There never was, Gemma. And what time did he get back to you? Now that he's dead, you think you can blame Carlyle's murder on him, don't you? He was innocent. You put him on trial. But Gary did not kill Jonathan Carlyle. And so what if he followed him? So what if he bothered him? Why shouldn't he? Amber's dead because of him. How are you so sure of that? Have you any idea what we've been through? What it's like? To see your child unable to walk up the stairs because she can't catch her breath. She used to say, Mommy, my batteries have run out. Why was Gary outside Carla's house that night? Oh, come on, Gemma. What is it you're hiding from me? Webster is convinced there's a cover-up at the hospital. Rasheen, right now we got enough on our plate with this DPS inquiry into how, with all the officers chasing him, Gary Webster still managed to jump to his bloody death. Well, what? Your priority is to find out if he killed himself because he was guilty of Carlisle's murder and whether he was just shit scared. I'm getting stonewalled in there, Mike, day after day, just as she was. I've got nothing out of hospital management. I've requested statements. Where are they? I'm telling you, there is something rotten in that hospital. Okay, so. You know, you can have some time off if you want. Uh, nobody else is so. Thanks, but no thanks. Besides, there's loads of stuff to wade through. Dr. Lawson! Hi. Uh, listen, I heard about Gary Webster. Yes. He was the main suspect in Jonathan's murder, wasn't he? Yes, but the investigation is ongoing. Now, I'd like to ask you a few questions about Amber Webster's case. Uh, Mr. Lawson, could I ask you to sign off on this, please? Why were the 
Mr. Webster so fixated with Jonathan Carlyle? I presume because he was Amber's surgeon. And the operation was routine? Yeah, quite standard. Uh, we filmed it actually for training purposes. You're welcome to see it. Why do you think Gary was so convinced there was negligence? He was a grieving father looking for someone to blame. It's an understandable reaction. No matter what we do, children like Amber often don't survive these congenital conditions. No, no tensions between you and Carlisle. Oh, sorry. Uh, no. We got on fine. Jonathan Carlyle and Nila Sajani's statements over the Amber Webster case. Nila's statement backs up his. Okay, they're both dated the 18th of October. That's the day before Carlyle was murdered. Well, it states that Carlyle left clear instructions that Adrian Lawson failed to follow. Well, what does Lawson's statement say? Apparently, he hasn't given his yet. Amber Webster died on the 20th of August. Where were you that night? I was in the room with Jonathan. I heard what he said on the phone to Adrian Lawson. If Adrian had followed his instructions, then Amber might still be here. You made that very clear in your statement. Tell me, what was Adrian Lawson's response to your statement? Shouldn't you be investigating a murder or a medical negligence case? Maybe it's the murder of someone involved in medical negligence. I repeat, what was Adrian Lawson's response to your statement? I didn't discuss it with him. Thank you very much, Mr. Jenny. you to give that statement. You know it's a complete fucking lie. Get out. What are you trying to do? Destroy me? I have been arrested and questioned over a procedure I had nothing to do with. You treated Amber Webster. She died on your shift. Now get out of my car. I wasn't the one out of my head on fentanyl, okay? I strongly advise you to retract that statement. Yes. Hi, Leela. We were just passing. We thought we'd pop in and see how you were. All right. I'll come in. Hello, sweetheart. Remember Leela, don't you, Jack? Hey. That's with Daddy at the hospital. You've grown. Come through. Have you been here long? Um, a while. <laughs> Listen. Neela, I just wanted to say how sorry I am about Jonathan. Right, thank you. Yes, I think we're all cut up about it. Um... <laughs> Gosh, it's really quite embarrassing. I don't really know where to start. Uh, we found out that yourself and Jonathan had filed an accusation against Adrian regarding the Amber Webster case. Yeah, um, your husband's already spoken to me about that. Really? Well, it's not true. And I'm not prepared to stand by and watch my family go down because of your lies, Neela. Why don't you come through here? 
Adrian is an excellent doctor and he's not to blame. I think he we was both given know bad that advice. Adrian wouldn't be where he is if it wasn't for Jonathan. I want you this to retract your statement, business, okay? Nina. Why don't you stick to housekeeping? I know you weren't with Jonathan the night that child died. Really? Well, then, who was with him that night? Hmm? There's a general ooze down here. Oh, we'll tidy up and that's it. I'm now leaving this patient in the very capable hands of my number two. That's Lawson. Just close, give us some platelets and FFP. God, I could do without this. Job done. See you in the morning. Anyone know who the lucky lady is tonight? Got anything? No, nothing dodgy's come up. <laughs> Set for lunch. No, Lawson wouldn't have pushed it our way if there'd been anything on it. What, so it was all in Gary Webster's head? Unless Lawson's trying to divert our attention somewhere else. Like? Like what happened in the ICU six hours later when she died. You know, maybe I should go back to the hospital. Speak to someone else if I can get a different perspective on things. Aren't it? What, like to a uh, little nursey that we met with Adrian Lawson? Sam, why don't you go see what you can get out of her? Nurse Claire Jenkins. Mike, we got the operation on tape. Do you want to have a look? No, I'm bloody done. What? Roisin, we are not investigating hospital negligence. Pouring over that poor girl's operation is a waste of bloody time. You should concentrate on trying to find Carlisle's killer. And if the hospital are culpable? That's a matter for the hospital. No, convinced there's a connection. Forensics came back with none of Gary Webster's DNA in Carlisle's foot. Emma Webster is convinced there's some sort of malpractice going on in the hospital and that Neela Sajani is admitting to tampering with the crime scene. I mean, all these doctors are just covering for each other. These doctors do a bloody difficult job with inadequate funding. So do we, Mike. Now, why should I be giving them any slack just because you've taken to doing charitable works in your old age? Their good works demand public confidence. The more we poke about, the more the public are going to think there's something rotten in that hospital. So you were on duty here when Amber came back from theatre? Yeah, and she was fine. About three hours later, it was clear she wasn't holding. I thought she was still internally bleeding, so I paged the on-call registrar. Adrian Lawson? Mm. He told me to get Carlisle on the phone while he examined Amber. Well, did that surprise you? Adrian, I've no, not at all. No Adrian's a good doctor, but Carlisle was the consultant. What do you think I am? You so, fucking nanny. Well, you called him at home? Mm. Adrian asked him for advice, and then he administered the treatment. Okay, thanks, Claire. I'll uh, give you a ring if I think of anything else, shall I? Hello. I appreciate you agreeing to see me. I wanted to give you my condolences and to assure you that your husband's death will be investigated by the Department of Professional Standards. Mrs. Webster, Jonathan Carlyle was killed with a massive overdose of fentanyl on the same night your husband was seen on CCTV near his house. I need to know if there's anything else you can tell us. Mrs. Webster. You have my number. If you can think of anything, please give me a call. I'll see myself out. Medication. You stay there. Yeah. 
fentanyl. Adrian, for the purposes of elimination, I have to ask you where you were on the night that Jonathan died. Um, I finished work early, got home about half past six and spent the rest of the evening with Sally. Sally, last Friday, the night Jonathan died? Yes. My mother had taken the kids. It was our first night alone together for ages. Adrian, are you aware that Jonathan Carlyle and Nila Sajani have made statements? They're implicating you in Amber Webster's death. What? Well, I knew they wanted statements because of the Webster family. I just haven't had time to write mine yet. I followed Jonathan's instructions to the letter. Ask the duty ICU nurse. Oh, uh, we already have. Sorry, I've got to go. Have you got any idea why they would blame you if it wasn't true? Maybe you should look into what Jonathan was doing that night. No. Uh, Claire, no, it's fine. It's Claire Jenkins from the hospital. Oh. Tonight? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I know what that is. Yeah, okay, I'll see you then. Bye. Don't know what she's got for me. Bet I do. <laughs> You're very tall. Am I? How tall? Six four. Mm. Am I telling stories out of school? You've got to watch yourself around that hospital these days. I'm not a gossip, honestly. Well, how do you mean? Well, all of a sudden, everyone's like St. Jonathan Carlyle. The truth is, he was a right bastard. He shagged everything, the younger the better. We used to warn all the new nurses. Guess what his favourite shag spot was? A treatment room with massage beds. Amazing. The night Amber died, did you actually speak to Carlisle at home? Are you ever off duty? You're very tense. <laughs> Just relax. <laughs> <laughs> okay, turn over. uniform doesn't do it for you then. Mrs. Webster. Sorry, please come in. Um, would you like a coffee? No, nothing, thanks. Okay, thanks. Sorry, it's my breakfast. Do you mind? Not at all. Sorry, you want to see me? I lied about Gary being at home the night of the murder. I'm sorry. He didn't come back until very late. I thought he'd been at the mortuary again. He wouldn't tell me. Well, we can check that out. Superintendent Walker told me Jonathan Carlyle died of an overdose of a drug called Fentanyl. It's a very strong opiate. Yes, I know. Used for pain relief. I brought you this. Gary suffered from crippling arthritis. It's his prescription. Fentanyl. 
I need to know if Gary killed Jonathan Carlyle. Satchel. Satch, get hold of Gary Webster's medical records for me, please. He's been using fentanyl. Again. I've not done anything. Why do you want me in the car? Get in the car! <sighs> Look, I've just about kept hold of my job. I've got dependents. Friday the 19th of October. Did you forget to mention that you let him in that night too? If my supervisor finds out about this one, I really will get fired. I admit what I did was wrong, but I felt really sorry for the guy. Don't mess me about it, Dave. This is more serious than you losing your job. Gary Webster is a suspect in a murder case. And I can have you done for withholding evidence. Do you understand me? He turned up when my shift started at 8.30. Maybe a bit later, I was held up in the call room. He was in a right state. He said he'd had a row with someone. I agreed to let him in so we could sit with his daughter for a bit. How long did he stay? Oh, I'm not sure. I mean, like I said, we had a bit of a problem in the call room. What are you saying to me, Dave? He was around, I think, when I came off for a break. It'd be around 2 a.m. OK, run this past me one more time now. This is really important, Dave. Do you understand? You're saying that Gary Webster was in the mortuary when... Yes. When I came on duty, I just said so. So you can verify that he remained there from 8.30 p.m. until 2 a.m., correct? Yeah. Good out. And thank you. Your dependents are very lucky, Dave. Satch. The fentanyl Gary Webster used came in patch form. They might have been able to extract enough to kill Carlisle, but he'd need a bloody good chemistry, sir. Yeah, well, it's irrelevant now. I've just had confirmation he was in the fucking mortuary all night long. I promised you I'd contact you when I'd heard. Gary's in the clear. You didn't kill Jonathan Carlyle. So can I bury them now? Yes. The coroner will release Gary's body to you. Thank you. Listen up, everybody. Gather round, please. OK. Gary Webster's situation. It's really hard for all of us to face the fact that we put pressure on him. We did it because we had evidence implicating him in Jonathan Carlyle's murder. Well, we got it wrong. I got it wrong. But no one should feel guilty about the tragic outcome. Is that understood? Roisin has said from the start we should have concentrated on the hospital staff. She believed that there is a direct link between the negligence case of Amber Webster and our murder. So let's get out there and find the evidence that proves it. And if we do find it's negligence, then maybe, just maybe, Gary Webster's wife will get some compensation. Palmer got his hands on a good hospital source last night. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I interviewed the nurse who was with Lawson the night Amber died. And? Well, when she called Carlisle's flat from intensive care, a woman answered the phone. Yeah, Neela Sajani, it's in her statement. Oh, 
Claire Jenkins said she'd recognised Neela's voice a mile away and whoever was with Carlisle that night, it definitely wasn't her. Yeah, this is my statement. And you stand by it, do you? Of course. I wouldn't have made it if I didn't think it was true. Oh, you know, it's amazing. You put someone in a white coat and everyone thinks that their IQ jumps, what, 50 points? You give someone a police badge and they just assume you're too thick to check a statement. Neela, one of our officers has spoken to the hospital's HR department. The night you said you were with Carlisle? The night that Amber Webster died? You were at a conference in Liverpool. You keep lying to us, don't you, Neela? Why? Jonathan swore Amber's death was not his fault. He just wanted me to back him up. What has he got on you? Nothing. It's the fentanyl, isn't it? No. Oh, you supplied Carlisle with the fentanyl. You have access to it, you're his girlfriend. And if it got out, you'd lose your job. But you could lose more than your job, sweetheart. So how about the truth? No more bullshit about removing hypodermic needles and stuffing the evidence down the toilet to protect his reputation. This. This was all about you. Yeah, because you were scared that if it got out, you would be exposed as well. You lied and misled this investigation incriminating an innocent man in Amber Webster's death. Start by charging her with conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. Then move on to the theft and supply of controlled drugs. Hey, look at these. They're from a stack of photos brought in from Webster's place. What the hell is Sally Lawson doing with Carlisle? Looks like he's giving her a thorough examination. Hi. Oh, do you want to come in? I'll get Adrian for you. We'd actually like to talk to both of you, Sally. Come through. You smell bad. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, stop it! I'm going to count to three. One, two, close. If I get to three, that trampoline is going. Would you like to sit down? No, thanks. Hi. Hi. We'd like you both to have a look at this photograph, please. Father, have you seen that photo before? No. Anything you'd like to tell us about it? Like what? Like the uh, nature of your relationship with Jonathan Carlyle. The nature of my relationship with him was that he was my husband's boss. That's it. Do you remember when that photograph was taken, Sally? Uh, a while ago. We went for coffee. I think we were discussing the fundraiser. Look, I can see how it might appear, but Jonathan was just the most outrageous flirt. You know that, Mike. I know Adrian did. Hmm. Were you ever in Jonathan Carlyle's house? Yes, a few times. <laughs> Remind me where you were the night he died. As we told you, we had a rare evening in together, didn't we, darling? My mother had the children overnight, and I cooked a special supper for us. That's what happened. Thanks. Thanks very much for seeing us. And Sally, as you were in Jonathan's house, I hope you don't mind coming in and giving us fingerprint and DNA identification just for elimination. No, of course not. Thank you. What are you doing? 
Sally, what meant to do? throw them out. I'm sorry. Give me the sheets. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Sally, give me the sheets. <laughs> Maybe we should get a lip reader in, see what you can come up with. Slow it up for me, frame by frame. Here, look at Webster. Look, one minute he's got the camera. Then it's gone. Where's the camera? What? Carlisle took it? Get Sockos over to Carlisle's place. Well, that's such. He was a clever boy. You wanted to see me? Yes. It's a little awkward. Something I couldn't say yesterday. Is it about Jonathan? We're going to find your prints and DNA all over Carlyle's house? Yes. Is there anything else, Sally? Adrian doesn't know. If he found out, it would destroy him. Sally, these things have a habit of coming out. If I were you, I would tell your husband the truth. Mike, can I ask? Are you any closer to finding Jonathan's killer? Yeah, we are very close. Well, who do you think did it? Oh, well, we're following a new line of inquiry. But I can tell you it definitely isn't Gary Webster. I can't do this, Adrian. It was horrible. He knows something. He's a policeman, for Christ's sake. If he knew something, do you think we'd still be here? We've been through this, Sally. I know. Stick to the story. Say nothing. I'll say nothing. That way they've got nothing to prove. Do you understand? Yes. Good. this. We found Webster's camera at Carlisle's. What you got? Pictures Webster hadn't downloaded from his camera. Oh, why were these taken? 19th of October. The night Carlisle was murdered. Thank you very much. Right. Bring the Lawsons in, but keep them separate. These photographs were taken the night Jonathan Carlyle was murdered. You still deny you were at Jonathan Carlyle's house the night he was killed? I've already told you I was having an affair with him. Please answer the question, Mrs. Lawson. I went there early, as you can see. But I left soon afterwards. On what time did you leave Carlyle's? You can't be suggesting I'm a suspect. <laughs> Just answer the question, please, Sally. I don't remember. Gary Webster was always hanging around with his camera. That night, Jonathan had had enough. But Webster violently attacked him. I knew he'd been threatening Jonathan, but... 
He was like a crazy person that night. Fucking hands up! I'm gonna show those to Adrian Lawson! You're fucking his wife! You're fucking his wife! I didn't feel safe there anymore, so I went home. This would be when? Jonathan was alive when I left. Webster must have come back later. Broken in the house or something. I should have said this before, but I was frightened. Well, what time did you go home again? I know I was home when Adrian got back at 6.30. Adrian, your wife has admitted she was with Carlisle the evening he was murdered. She also admitted having a sexual affair with him. Did you know about that? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, your wife is screwing your boss under your nose for six months and you have no idea about it. And Neil is a journey. Screwing her too. Yeah. Um, everyone knew about that. What's that got to do with anything? Remind me again what time it was when you arrived home the evening of the murder. Uh, around 6.30. And you can confirm you spent the rest of the evening with your wife? Yes. So could you explain to me how you could have been at home all evening, well, from 6.30pm as yourself and your husband claim, when this photo here places you at Carlisle's flat at 7.53pm? I need to talk to Adrian. I'm sorry, that's not possible. Where were you at 7.53 p.m., Sally? I have nothing to say about that. This photograph shows your wife outside Carlisle's house at 7.53 p.m. You've been covering for her, haven't you? Oh, she's your wife, you've got a couple of kids. It's natural. But she's let you down badly. Perverting the course of justice in a murder case is a very serious charge. I was home at 6.30. And so was Sally. You can reset the clock on a digital camera, you know. It's hardly going to pass for evidence in a court of law. Sally, did you kill Jonathan Carlyle? Why would I kill Jonathan? Oh, I don't know. I mean, were you aware he was also screwing his anaesthetist, Neela Sajani? God, he must have had some kind of rotor going, Sally. He's screwing you in the evening, he's screwing her in the morning when, well, he knows you're tucked up in bed with the hubby. God, you know, that would drive me crazy. You're wrong. Really, what, betraying your husband, uh, what was it, was dangerous and exciting, it made you feel alive. Maybe he even introduced you to your dark side, is that it? And then he betrays you, Sally. Sally, I think your husband's lying through his teeth. But we do a photographic evidence. And right now, you're the only person I can prove was in a position to kill Jonathan Carlyle that night. I'm not taking the blame for this. Meanwhile, your husband will walk away from this, except you, Sally. You'll go down for murder. For a long time, Sally. So the best thing you can do is to tell us the truth. Now, I know you're scared, but you could be facing a very long prison sentence. And that's a lot of prison visits, watching those tiny little children growing up without you, Sally. I dropped the kids at my mother's and told Adrian I was having a night out with the girls. But you went to Carlisle's. I know. We were in bed and the doorbell went. And Jonathan was expecting a courier from the hospital. I 
Because it was Adrian. He wanted to talk about the Amber Webster case. But Jonathan kept putting him off. Put the boots. Jonathan, Jonathan, I find it. I'm teach you. The thing I do about it. You don't need the saddle, you just need the the crops or the boots or something like that. I think we both need a drink. You know me, Adrian. Never could say no to a needy woman. Especially one with such a great arse. Get your clothes on. It was my fault we got into this mess. I had to help him sort it out. And the fentanyl? It was all Adrian's idea. He thought he could make it look like an overdose. So the man who was screwing your career was also screwing your wife. Humiliating. She's lying to you. She's prepared to testify against you. I'll testify against her. Really? Adrian Lawson, you will be charged with the murder of Jonathan Carlyle. Your wife will be charged with perverting the course of justice. I thought no matter how bad things got, get through it as long as I had Sally in the kids. Fucking bitch. Night, madam. Night. Sally Lawson. We are all terribly sorry. If there is anything that I can do for you, please tell me. There is something. You're all very generous with your condolences. 
I can't live in this place anymore. And I want to take them back home with me. But I need 3,000 pounds. Your boss is very good at raising money. Do you think he can help me? Give them the burial they deserve? I'll see what I can do.